Greg Butler of the South Australian No-Till Farmers Association talks to us about the benefits of crop rotation. One of the biggest problems in trying to grow a monocrop is disease. The problem is if you go and grow the same crop again the following year, you've got those same pests and diseases hanging around ready to, ready to pounce. And so what rotation can do, both in terms of airborne disease and soil-borne disease, is give the, the soil what they call a break. Okay? And so what we're able to do is minimise the risks that are associated with a disease of a, a specific crop. The other thing about rotation is bringing in, in particular, things like legumes, because they can bring in extra nitrogen from the air and then they can be a source of, of nitrogen rather than using chemical fertiliser, although um, chemical fertiliser still will be required in, in some circumstances as a supplement. Um, still being able to get that rotational benefit can have as quite a significant cost benefit. Alan Buckley of Glenray Holdings, Wakery, South Australia, shares his personal experiences with crop rotation. In the last couple of years, we've been playing around with sowing wheat after barley. In other words, just going two weeks, then barley, then wheat again, then going back to oats. The wheat crop after barley tends to be quite a good wheat crop. We try and sow 50% of our property to wheat a year and then 25% to uh, barley and barley and oats and 25% to canola and, and, and cereal rye to try and make a balance. What we've found is the canola is the key to the, to the rotation. It tends to give us a good disease break, which then gives us the next three crops after that uh, higher yielding than the paddocks where we haven't had canola and where we've just sown wheat with, without a canola uh, a break crop. There's a little bit of work to do yet on the rotation to, and I don't think it ever stops. It's, it's, it's just keep on, keep on going and, uh, and trying different things. But certainly by breaking the three wheats up and putting the barley in the middle appears to have some benefits again in terms of yield uh, without actually costing anything in terms of chemical applications, etc. Since 2009, Rick Llewellyn and Therese Macbeth of the CSIRO have been conducting trials on break crops in the Mallee region. What we're really aiming to do is understand where the break effects are, are coming from. Is it biology? Is it nitrogen? Is it water? Where are the big break effects uh, coming from in terms of benefiting the wheat crop that follows? And, we, and we're seeing big break effects out here and it's a matter of really explaining what's driving those so that farmers can understand what might work and when. In every season we've evaluated the productivity of a range of break options like canola, uh, lupins, peas, rye and we've also looked at the effect of those breaks on subsequent wheat crops and we've looked at the effects on the subsequent wheat crops not just from a perspective of yield and economics but we've also considered what some of the chemical and biological factors might be that are causing this break effect where we get um, up to one tonne extra wheat yield in a season following a break. Uh, we did see a second year break effect, so two years after the break crop we were seeing around 10% um, wheat yield benefits. I think we'll need to be quite strategic about when we use those breaks. Um, rather than having a fixed rotation, we'll need to think about um, the best agronomy for those break crops and the best season types for those break crops and, and fit them in when the opportunity arises because we know of these benefits that they have associated with them. Mm -hmm.